Welcome back to Skippers. Today, we are going to look at three second half sleepers for fantasy baseball. Hope you guys enjoyed the home run derby last night and get to enjoy the all-star game tonight. But starting on Friday, the fantasy baseball grind is back as you try and chase championships. So let's get into these three players. My first one is going to be Nick Lodolo of the Reds. On the season, 2-1, and one, a 6-2-9 ERA, 47 strikeouts, a whip of 175, and 34 and a third innings pitched. After a tough start to the season for Lodolo, he went on to the injured list with a stress reaction in his left tibia. But now he is out of the walking boot and has begun his rehab program in Arizona. And he is targeting an August return. Although you won't see instant returns with Lodolo, obviously, he was someone that I really wanted to buy low on right before he got hurt. And he has been hurt by some terrible fly ball to home run numbers and batted ball luck. Personally, I'm happy that this isn't an arm injury as it takes a little bit of risk away on my end. And in his last nine starts of 2022, he had a 275 ERA with 67 strikeouts and 55 and two thirds. He's not going to lose you your lead if you pick him up right now and stash him on your IL, but there is a chance that a fresh arm Nick Lodolo could help win you them at the end of 2023. In his seven outings to start this season, Lodolo had a 12.32 Ks per nine, 2.62 walks per nine, a batting average of balls in play against of 435, and a home run to fly ball rate at 27%. All those numbers show you that Lodolo was due for some positive regression. He's not one of the worst pitchers in baseball like those numbers would almost suggest. Things were just totally not going his way. When you look at the expected stats as well, they tell you a similar similar story. His actual ERA, obviously 629, expected ERA 488, his FIP 581, and a great XFIP of 3.75. Again, the XFIP is so good because of all the strikeouts that Lodolo gets. Lodolo's strikeout rates and walk rates were in the 80th percentile or better, as well as a whiff rate and chase rate in the 80th percentile or better as well. It's not the best situation to be in, again, pitching at Great American Ballpark hurt, but he, I think he is a true sleeper for the rest of the season. If he comes back and gets healthy, he could really help you win your leagues at the end of the season. Second sleeper for for the second half is Spencer Torkelson of the Tigers. This season, 228 average, 12 home runs, 45 driven in, two stolen bases, and an OPS of 711. Spencer Torkelson should not be only 27% rostered, and this is an easy second half sleeper. After a great May, average-wise, we'll look at a shitty June minus the seven home runs that he hit. I got to see Torkelson live last weekend. He is putting together a great start to July as well. Torkelson has started to find his power at the major league level. Torkelson hits the ball super hard, has a good barrel rate, and doesn't hit that many ground balls. Although this leads to a lot of easy flyouts and that's reflected in a bad batting average of balls in play, I think that translates really well to eventually lifting the ball out of the ballpark. His numbers have increased greatly from last year and he seems to be the big league hitter he was drafted to be. Spencer Torkelson sits in the 92nd percentile in max exit velocity, 81st percentile in barrel rate, and 84th percentile in hard hit rate. He has a zone contact percentage of 86.6% and his expecting batting average is at 254. He's walking at a 10% rate, striking out below 25%. The slider is kind of hurt a little bit, 217 batting average against, but he crushes fastballs to an expected batting average of 290. Spencer Torkelson is whiffing less, he's hitting the ball harder, and he's hitting more line drives. I believe in his breakout continuing in the second half of this season. And the third player is Oscar Colas of the White Sox so far this season, an average of 213. He has one home run, he's driven in eight, two bags, and an OPS of 534. I was in on the Oscar Colas hype train preseason, and it's been unfortunate to see it not really pan out at the big league level. Colas was someone that I like to draft with my last round pick, thinking he had so much upside and a path to a lot of playing talent on that White Sox team. He's still only 24 years old, but he hit really well in his time in AAA so far this season, and he's been okay since he has been recalled. What I think is that the White Sox might start selling off some assets and will let some of the young guys like Colas play a ton. His power hasn't shown up at the big league level, but he was making a ton of solid contact in the minors. At Charlotte this year, Colas was hitting 293 with nine home runs, 29 driven in, an 866 OPS in 48 games. Games. And as of July 2nd, Colas had hit seven home runs in six games in the minors. Obviously why he got recalled. He's a free swinger and you never know what you're going to get with those guys and you don't know what will get them, right? So I think it can click kind of at any second for Oscar Colas. At the big league level, he's running a 62% ground ball rate, which will never help. He's pulling the ball the least he ever has at any level of American professional baseball for him. His zone contact percentage is 84.9%, which isn't bad at all. And he hits the ball with a good max exit velo in the 86th percentile. I think he is ready to break breakout at any point, and if he goes on a little run here soon with more at-bats and tapping into his power, he's a huge second-half sleeper. Thanks again for tuning in to Skippers. Let me know what you think of these three guys. Don't forget to subscribe, join the Discord, and I'll see you guys later.